Today's feast, that of the most precious blood of Jesus, continues the mystery of the redemption, which was proper to, to Good Friday as we celebrated not too long ago when you really stop and think about it. And it's also in a way continues the feasts of the Holy Cross in May, the Corpus Christi and the Sacred Heart. At first, this feast was celebrated only on the first Sunday of July, because July was always customarily dedicated to the precious blood of our Lord. And uh, so Pope Pius IX actually said that this feast was to be observed on the first Sunday of this month. But later on, when Pope St. Pius X became the, uh, the Pope, then he moved this feast to July 1st. And now we still keep to this rule and observe it as one of the highest feasts of the church, a double of the first class, we call it, and uh, a truly great feast it is. As we look through the liturgical year at all the different feasts and the texts of the Mass and the, the Divine Office, we find that when we study it, it's most fascinating. It's very interesting and a very great help to our spiritual life. Our, life sh- our, our spiritual life, our prayer life, should always be centered not around personal and private devotions, but around the Mass and the liturgy. That is the way that our Lord and all of the popes of the Church have always wanted it. Everything should be Mass-centered, liturgy-centered, And then you have all of your other private devotions. Because this, the liturgy, is the most sanctifying of all in the spiritual life. And uh, the liturgy of today's feast stresses history and dogma more than it does mystery and drama. We often think of, when we refer to the passion, we think of all the drama that went with it. A good sort of drama. Sad, but good from a spiritual point of view. But today's, the entire liturgy focuses on history and dogma. That is, the history of the passion and the teaching behind it. Just today, as I was praying matins outside, um, I caught a glimpse of what they meant by this. Each of the antiphons, we read an antiphon before each psalm. There are nine psalms and matins. And each one was just a little snippet taken from the Passion, uh, from the Passion in the, the Holy Gospels. And it went over it historically, line by line, and talked about Pontius Pilate, perhaps, and what he had done to our Lord, and how Judas had betrayed our Lord. So you see, it does truly, this feast goes through the whole historical aspect and brings to our mind the whole history of the Passion. But then, too, it has a great application to our spiritual life. In the intro in today's Mass, we read, You have redeemed us with your blood. And this is, as, as we pray this verse, we are taken in spirit. This is what the liturgy wants us to do, to be taken in spirit to heaven, where we hear all of the redeemed singing as a hymn of thanksgiving those very words. You have redeemed us with your blood. And yet at the same time, we remain on earth singing to our Savior his mercy and fidelity. You have redeemed us with your blood. The saints in heaven, the faithful on earth, we can all say it. You have redeemed us with your blood. The only difference is this. They can say the precious blood has already saved them. You and I have not been saved yet. We are redeemed, but not saved. And then we go into Psalm 88, one of my favorite psalms. Misericordias Domini in Eternum Cantabo. I put that on my anniversary card as, as the uh, psalm. We usually pick a psalm for that. The mercies of the Lord I will sing forever. And that's exactly what we do in heaven. And that's what we do here on earth on feasts such as this, the Feast of the Precious Blood. We sing the mercies of, of the Lord forever. And then we turn to the collect of today's Mass, and the church prays. We should always remember that. As we're reading these different prayers of the church, they're not just another devotion. 
It is the church praying for our needs. It is, you might say, the mouthpiece of Christ. That's how we should look at it. It is our Lord Jesus Christ praying for us from the altar. And these prayers have very great efficacy, very great power. And so in the collect of the Mass, the Church prays that the power of the precious blood might protect us from earthly misfortunes so that we might enjoy the fruits of the precious blood in heaven. There again you have a very beautiful thought. See, see how merciful the Church is in asking for such things. There is no greater misfortune, of, of course, than that of sin. And it is so horrible that no amount of blood, here's a meditation for you, no amount of blood shed by man or beast could satisfy for even the smallest of venial sins. Only the blood of a God who could become man and yet remain at the same time God could make up for such an infinite offense as even the slightest sins. Here again we see the mercy of God which has come down to earth to satisfy the justice of God, to satisfy for us who are the offenders. When you reflect on that, all these things speak of the wonderful mercies of our Lord. And then we turn to the epistle. It is the same as that of Passion Sunday, and it says that the blood of animals sacrificed in the Old Testament lacked power since That ritual in the Old Testament was only a prefiguration of what was to come. The true power and the true merit lie in the blood of the divine lamb. In the Old Testament, they sacrificed oxen and and things like that. In the New Testament, it's the divine lamb of God who came to shed his blood. And the gospel is that of the feast of the sacred heart, too. And here again we read of how Longinus takes his spear after he sees that our Lord was already dead on the cross and they were about to break his knees to make sure that he died. And then they realize, no, he's already dead. So Longinus takes his spear and he pierces the side of our Lord and blood and water pours out from the sacred heart. The mercy of God, that there is no more blood left in his his body. And that is why the water came out, the merciful heart of our Lord. And that is, too, when the church was born, you might say. It flowed, the church and the sacrament. It's said in today, St. Augustine, I believe it was, said in Matins today, that just as Eve came from the side of Adam, so Holy Mother Church came from the side of the second Adam, our Lord, on the cross. So you see that we have very beautiful thoughts in today's liturgy. As we continue with this Mass, I almost said read devoutly, pray devoutly these prayers because they're full of edification and of unction and of consolation. The Savior's blood is the fountain of salvation and it should really truly gush over into eternal life for us. So today at the consecration, at your communion, offer the precious blood of our Lord to his Father for yourselves, for your neighbors, and for your loved ones. How many sins are being committed daily, and it is the precious blood of our Lord that can atone for it, especially in this Mass, as we continue with the the sacrifice of Calvary, all redone. The precious blood, you can almost see it flowing down from the crucifix onto the altar and into the souls of all the people. How merciful our Lord is to give us his precious blood and devotion to it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.